In order to fully appreciate Star Trek IV The Voyage Home, a little context is required. Star Trek IV The Voyage Home is the fourth feature film using the original cast of Star Trek. In Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan, Captain Kirk and the Enterprise crew have their final battle with Kirk's longtime nemesis, Khan. Khan! In order to finally defeat Khan, the Enterprise must outrun the explosion of a time bomb called Genesis. It's the Genesis wave. They're on a build-up to detonation. That Khan had stolen, but the Enterprise has been crippled. Spock sacrifices his life by entering a radioactive area in order to repair the Enterprise and allow the rest of the crew to escape because... The needs of the many outweigh... The needs of the few... Or the one... Kirk and the crew honor Spock by launching his remains from a photon torpedo into space. The torpedo lands on a planet near the Genesis explosion. Now it's important to know that Genesis, the device that exploded, was not intended as a weapon. Scientists have always been pawns of the military. But as a tool that can create life from inert matter. It literally is Genesis. So when Spock's remains landed on the planet, the planet and Spock were reborn. In Star Trek III, The Search for Spock, Kirk and a few key crew members realize that Spock, being the smart guy he is, transferred his consciousness into the ship's Dr. McCoy. Remember. Before entering the radioactive area in the last film. Therefore, the crew must disobey orders, steal the Enterprise to return to the planet, find Spock, take him to his home planet of Vulcan, where other Vulcans may perform a ritual, to transfer his consciousness from McCoy back into Spock. However, along the way, some Klingons, one played by Doc Brown, Christopher Lloyd, caused some shit, including killing Kirk's son. So the crew tricks the Klingons into boarding the Enterprise, which they then destroy and steal the Klingon ship. This is why in Star Trek IV, The Voyage Home, Kirk and the crew are traveling in a Klingon ship, which can become invisible by the way, they call it cloaked. And why the crew must stand trial for killing some Klingons. It is also why everyone is a little weirded out by Spock, but to be honest, they're always a little weirded out by Spock. Spock is half human and half Vulcan, a race that prizes logic above all else and condemns emotion. So Spock is always struggling to find peace between his emotional human half and logical Vulcan half. Note that Vulcans can also stun people with a net grab and read minds with a mind meld. Lastly, the cocktail I prepared for the movie screening is inspired by a classic Star Trek drink, Romulan Ale. Captain Kirk, I thought Romulan Ale was illegal. Romulan Ale? Why, well, you know, this is illegal. I only use it for medicinal purposes. 